No, I like them to go down because I like to buy things cheaper. Notwithstanding that, my number is 85.68. That's the Atlanta Braves record as of tonight. So I'm pitching you on baseball, and I want everyone to own a baseball team by buying a share at $26. In the event, the market is a function of revenue outlook. The world IMF has got us at over $100 trillion global GDP in two years, and economies are booming uh, in the U.S. The net worth of the household came out yesterday at $107 trillion. Uh, wages are rising. Cost, food is okay, but fuel and uh, coming, uh, pinching the consumer a little bit. So we'll see rising wages. So I, I, uh, there's nothing that I look at beyond the four T's that I look at. Tariffs, I'm kind of neutral on that for a variety of reasons. Tell me why. I mean, we'll, well get to the other T's. Basically, uh, you, you think the market's too complacent about tariffs? No. I think it's uh, adjusted because we as a country cannot continue to give $400 billion to China a year, and that has to change. That's a major detraction from our deficit intellectual property. It doesn't make sense. In the, so you've got to negotiate better, and that's what's going on. Do you agree with what the president's doing? I agree with fair trade. Not, you know, I'm certainly in the camp of uh, uh, avoiding a smooth Hawley type thing, of, of all in favor of Ricardo and uh, Adam Smith in terms of comparative advantages. <clears throat> but you got to be fair and you got to be practical and you cannot transfer 500 billion dollars of your country's wealth to non-US particularly if they buy the debt and hold the debt but how do you reconcile um, the market not being too complacent with trade when well, you have the you know, you got Micron talking about gross margins are going to be affected. You got yeah, Fred Smith no at FedEx yeah, talking they, about they, the impact. You got revenues, and then you have cost of goods sold. The companies we talk to are having an impact not only from local transportation costs, but also in rising input costs. <clears throat> and so gross margins may be tweaked a little bit. SG&A is going to cover it because they, uh, for activity enhancements, pre-tax operating profits, okay. Taxes are terrific, territorial tax versus global, lower tax rates. And then when I look into 2019 and 20. Uh, you know, I've got the taxes are really a positive, but companies have taken money, taken money this year, Scott, and put into their pension plan to take the 35 percent tax deduction. Uh, you'd look at company specific, Greif, put money in, cash out of pocket into the pension plan, which gives them a little cushion in 2019 on cash flow. So <coughs> I'm looking at how they're managing the, uh, the surge in earnings. So I'm not as negative about the slowdown in 2019 on operating profit. The big issue is at 307, you got a headwind on, mar on multiples. Will multiples be sustainable two or three years that you have today? And they're not. Yeah. Oh, let's open it to the, to the panel. To this whole question of whether it's time, John, to, yep. to get even more bullish. You think maybe there's a chase for performance over the next few months that's going to propel you even higher um, if you think the market's too complacent. I, I think there is going to be that chase, Scott. Um, and I'll play off something you and Mario both touched on as far as FedEx and the statements that came out there as far as tariffs being worrisome and so forth. When you see a reaction to a statement like that, and if I blindfolded you right now, you'd say FedEx probably down two, three bucks, maybe even, you know, a full two or three percent. No, it's up one percent. So when news like that isn't driving markets into a fearful state and instead you've got greed that's lifting them higher. I mean, you did have FedEx get, get upset on the, on the day of its earnings, which were good. Yes. And the outlook and the guidance was good. Mm -hmm. uh, but Fred Smith, and I believe the, the words were exactly mercantilism doesn't work under a, a system True. of terror. True. And again, but my, my point is that when you hear that at a, uh, whether it's an earnings call or whether it just happens to be an interview with Scott Wapner, um, when you have something that should be driving that stock to the downside and instead, Stock, after that initial reaction, Scott, is lifting. I mean, today's comments where he said tariffs are worrisome, again, the market is lifting. FedEx is lifting. Um, why? My answer is when it's bad news that doesn't drive the stocks down, that's the time you have to be in.